Welcome back. Well, the entire month of June has been dedicated to men's health awareness. Really serve as a reminder that, hey, you got to get those regular checkups. They're important. And guys, we all know we don't like going to the doc, but you got to do it, especially when it comes to preventable health. So Rick Shue from Altair Medical Spa is here to talk about overall men's health and some other great things. First off, welcome to the show. Great to have you here. Yeah, man. thanks. Thanks for having me. So what do you see for men as kind of the biggest thing that we're not doing that we should be doing for our health? You know, the biggest thing for men is, you know, taking care of their skin. We were growing up. We were never taught to take care of our skin. Women are taught to take care of their skin very early on, and it starts when they start using makeup. But for us, when did we ever put a lotion or a cream, or for that matter, when did <laughs> dirt, we dirt? Right? Oh, <laughs> rub it in. You know, it's, well, it does give you a little sun protection, so it's not necessarily bad. But the, you know, the biggest thing we have is that we don't use sunscreen. You know, the best men grew up with was the idea that well, I do use aftershave, you know, or cologne. Right. You know, I'll put that on, but I'm not going to put anything else on. Well, and, and I think part of it is just sort of that perception of, oh, you're going to put a bunch of foo-foo stuff on your body. So why is it so important that I'm using sunscreen or taking care of my skin? You know, if you're looking at it, one of the biggest health issues that we're dealing with with men, um, skin cancer. And unfortunately, now we're talking about deadly, really deadly skin cancers like melanoma. Like that. We have to start protecting our skin from that. Um, people have a lot of, there's a lot of myths out there mm -hmm. about putting it on. It's like, well, I don't want something plugging my pores or things like that. Uh, but you're not going to plug your pores with it. You know, you just have to, you have to start protecting. For men, we find most of our skin cancers, I'm finding them, um, like your precancers are the, uh, the first ones. You're going to find them on the ear rims here, uh -huh. like in that area in here. And because our ears are out there, men wear baseball hats, you know, which, you know, it's a, it's a style and it's fashionable and I like to have, you know, their names on it or something like that. Um, but you're leaving your ears vulnerable like that. And you'll see it. I mean, they come in and their ears are bright red. You know, they don't think of the ear. You know, they might even put sun sunblock on, but they're going to put it here, maybe mm -hmm. like that, and, you know, arms and stuff, but they don't do their ears. So don't forget the ears. So it's, what should I be looking for as a guy? Should I just come in for a regular checkup? Is there something specifically I should be looking for? Mm -hmm. Going, oh, my gosh, that's a sign. I better go get in and see a doc or? Well, yeah. Skin cancer. All the above. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. Yeah, skin cancer. Uh, when you're looking at that, um, precancers are easier to detect. It's something like you're going to get a, a dry spot, and it's kind of like a little plaque, and then you scratch it off, and it comes back. You know, and you scratch it off, and it comes back. You know, that's usually going to be probably a precancer. Now, if you have a lot of dryness in the whole area, then you could say it could be a little eczema or something like that. But if you just have an isolated spot and you keep scratching and it comes back, that's not a good sign. So go that, see you. Mm -hmm. um, you can go see your dermatologist, your family practice doctor, you know, point mm -hmm. it out to them. They usually have liquid nitrogen. They'll just freeze those off like that. What about, too, you hear a lot about, you know, if you see moles, how serious is that and what should you be doing and what moles should I be looking for? Yeah. Well, women are better at it than men because they're more detailed than you and I are. It's like um, a man, we need to once in a while detail ourselves. You know, once a month is usually plenty. But the thing I've found for my patients, uh, the best advice I give them is look for something on you that's unusual. Cancer doesn't come like a pack. It comes in a, as a lone wolf. You know, you'll see it and you'll go, what is that? You know, I don't have that anywhere else. It's just all by itself. It's a lone wolf. And in the early stages, cancer doesn't look ugly. Like, they'll show you these pictures of, like, melanoma, and they say, oh, my God, well, yeah, if I saw something like that, I'd be in right away, you know. But in the early stages, when we can surgically excise it safely and it hasn't <clears throat> metastasized yet, um, those kind of things, they just look odd, you know. So odd man out kind of a kind of a thing. So you mentioned sunscreen. Are there any other, any other great products you suggest or procedures that we should be doing for prevention? Yeah, for men, um, for men, you know, think of sunblock. It's got to have a zinc or a titanium in the ingredients like that. And I tell my patients that, you know, I want them to use, you know, a, a higher grade product, you know, kind of from the neck up like this. And then you can use the less expensive stuff elsewhere, you know, like that. But the big thing, you're, the big thing for you is key areas where we find cancers, you especially want to get those areas, like in here, you know, under the eye like mm -hmm. that, um, the ears, your temporal regions in here like that, where we find most cancers. For melanoma, most of our cancers are found, like melanomas are found on the back. So you're not going to look at your back, so you, you have to rely on your girlfriend or your wife, you know, to check your back for you. So skin, anything else guys should be aware of as far as men's health? 
Yeah, there are treatments. Like for men, um, I do a lot of halo procedures. It's a special laser procedure. It's a hybrid laser. It's two lasers that are firing simultaneously. Now, the research has been released now um, as far as um, treating precancer lesions, not cancer lesions like that. And it's, um, it's an aggressive laser. It's, uh, it's a mixture of um, ablative and it's also, um, it's also got a, it's creating heat that's causing a denaturing of protein. So your skin's getting replaced with new healthy skin. We've got some pictures as well, apparently, about some migraine headaches. If you want to walk us through this, please. Oh, migraines. <clears throat> migraines are fun. I mean, migraines are... <laughs> for <it's>, you, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for me, it's fun. Um, migraines, FDA approval for migraines came mm. out around 2010. You know, it's about seven years ago, like that. It's, um, they found that, uh, that by using Botox in a certain way to certain areas of the body that, you know, including the neck, and the, and the head and the face, that we could prevent migraines too, not just, not just treat them after they already have the migraine. Um, I started uh, finding it um, prior to, well, probably about four years prior, and it was by accident. It's my, patients were coming in and I was doing regular Botox on them in key areas like this, and they're coming back and they say, I don't have any more headaches. And I'm going, what? And they go, no, I, my headaches are gone. You know, wow. yeah. So he started. So then I started doing more research on it, and I started doing more trigger point injections with it. Now, like for you, can I show you, on you? Sure. Okay, <clears throat> like this. And now, so the key area that we find for injections, because when you're looking at the nerve pathways, it kind of runs like, like from this angle. I can show you here. It kind of runs like this, and it goes down here. And I don't know if you ever have migraine. No. Yeah. You know, well, headaches, and they go right down into here like in those areas. So typically, you know, we will start in here like this. And if that, if the headaches go away, that's great. And if it doesn't, then the other key point, and you can find it yourself, all you do is just take your finger, I'll say to the patient, I'll say, just touch here. Tell me when you find your tender spot, which is going to be somewhere right about in here. And that's the other junction box. And then I'll put about four or five units right there. And we need to quickly give a website or something like that so people get more information because we've got to wrap things up. How can people get a hold of you? Uh, they can, at, I'm at Altair Clinic. Altair Clinic? Yep, it's Med Spa. It's, um, um, they can just call or book an appointment online. We've got it on the screen as well. So thank you so much for being here, Rick. Great stuff. We appreciate it. And we'll be right back.